Deep within the jungles of southern India, there lives a legendary king. Respected and feared by all, he is swift and strong and deadly. He is the largest venomous snake in the world. But until now, his life has been a mystery. This is the story of a monarch and his remarkable tri- It is early on a cool morning when the King of Snakes embarks on a journey. His is an ancient forest, alive with creatures great and small. Like the King Cobra himself, many hover precariously close to extinction. But on this morning, the jungle pulses with the sounds of insects and birds. A great Indian hornbill delicately feeds his family hidden in their nest below. Through this jungle book world, the king roams great distances. Despite the uproar his presence causes, his world is mostly silent. He has picked up the heavy footfalls of a nearby elephant. Even the mighty pachyderm steers clear of this serpent, for just one bite may bring death. But the king would strike such a beast only in self-defense, for he feeds solely on snakes. Still, the langurs are cautious. Today, the king is not interested even in snakes. He is searching for something else, something very important. His eyesight is better than most serpents, but he sees without color and only registers objects when they move. He smells the air with his tongue. So acute is this sense, he can use it to find water. And that's exactly what he's looking for. King is about to shed his skin. He needs extra fluid to help separate his old coat from his new. It is an uncomfortable time for the King Cobra. A new skin is developing beneath his outer scales. He must find a place to hide until it is time to shed. The king is unaccustomed to his fragile condition. It is an uncertain time. At last, he discovers a burrow. And none of the forest's creatures wants to share quarters with the king. For the next 10 days, he will stay here. Irritable and tense, he's sensitive to any movement nearby.
Even the harmless wanderings of a turtle unsettled the king, for his eyes had become cloudy from a secretion which helps separate his skins. Half blind and vulnerable, he is always ready to strike. At last, his eyes begin to clear, a sign his new skin has finished growing. The king is back, but must still shed his old scales. His spent skin is tight and itchy. As he scrapes and rubs to relieve the discomfort, his outer scales begin to peel. It is a remarkable transformation. Even his fangs, teeth, and the tips of his tongue will be replaced again and again during the course of his life. When the skin over his eyes lifts away, he is given new windows through which to view his world. At 12 feet long and still growing, the snake must endure shedding four or five times a year. His discarded skin makes a perfect meal for the smaller creatures of his realm. In this kingdom, nothing is wasted. After 10 days without eating, the king is hungry. A tree offers a good vantage point for spotting prey. For his size, the king cobra is an agile climber. Now, he waits and watches. A movement in the tree reveals another hungry creature, a young hornbill. Its father has spotted something. The king cobra watches the hunt unfold. A vine snake ribbons across a nearby branch. Much smaller than the cobra, this nimble hunter is no match for the hornbill. The little snake looks as fierce as he can. But it is only a brave display. His venom is mild.
again. The rat snake returns the attack, but it's already doomed. It's prey, he'll have no need to hunt. But yet the king is restless. It is now the dry season, the time to find a mate. A new intoxicating scent fills the air. Some of the rainforest trees have dropped their leaves and begun to fruit. It is a joyous season for langurs. Across the forest, the jackfruits are ripening. Their sweet, pungent odor beckons. It's an irresistible lure to creatures both small and great. To reach the succulent flesh within the 20-pound fruit, the prickly skin must first be peeled. It's a messy job for even the most adept of elephants. She leaves a veritable banquet in her wake. This is a season when king cobras roam widely through the forest. But today, the king's subjects are distracted by the fruit. They take only passing notice of his presence. The king still seeks a mate, and it's in this fruiting season that he's most likely to find one. But it's not a female he encounters. It's a rival, a formidable male. A potent threat, he must be driven away. Each is capable of killing the other with a single bite. A strange duel begins, an encounter rarely witnessed and never before filmed. Rather than a fight to the death, the battle has evolved into a ritualized dance. To win, one snake must force the other's head to the ground. There's a victor. It's the intruder. The king has been dethroned. Driven from his domain, he must seek another. But the rainforests of southern India are a finite land As people press in, less and less remains for the King Cobra. Our King has no choice but to leave the jungle. Fortunately for the King Cobra, water is no barrier. He is a gifted swimmer.
But what lies ahead for the king? As the forest is cleared, its creatures more and more frequently cross the border forest. And this is where Whitaker makes his release, far from tea estates and people. After his encounter with the human race, the King Cobra seeks refuge. A patchwork of woods and open grassland, this new home has all he needs, shelter and food. But there will also be other King Cobras, and now he is the newcomer. Cautiously, he slides through the undergrowth. He senses something up ahead, a snake. Is it food? His tongue picks up a telltale scent. It's another King Cobra, but this time a female. The King may have found his queen. She stands on guard. She may be ready to mate, but her bite is deadly. So he moves slowly. to entice her. But his gentle overtures are rebuffed. Abandoning the subtle approach, he becomes bolder. Perhaps this will excite her. respond, the king's advances turn more urgent. Finally, she begins to show interest, sliding her long, sinuous body against his. At last, with their tails entwined, they mate. It's a lengthy affair. This limbless embrace may last as long as three hours. When the male withdraws his crimson penis, the union is over. The two will go their separate ways, but the king has passed on his legacy. It is April, the season of serpentine unions and approaching rains. Clouds signal a difficult time ahead. With eggs developing inside her, the female cobra needs to feed more frequently now. In only 40 days, she'll lay her clutch just before the monsoon breaks.
Rising humidity brings forth a new generation of creatures. A hammerhead slug feels its way across the earth. The female seems to be moving more slowly as her eggs continue to grow, and her journey will become more uncomfortable yet. For the moisture has triggered sinister stirrings on the forest floor. Suckers of the rainforest come forth by the thousands. For the past six months, they have been dormant in the soil. Now, they are hungry for blood, any blood. From the moment they emerge, leeches home in on virtually any animal that moves. Once aboard the serpent, they make for the vulnerable gaps between her scales. At this time of year, hardly an animal in the jungle is spared this plague. As daylight fades, there is at least some comfort. With twilight, the jungle becomes cooler. In the brief dusk of the tropics, one world prepares to sleep, while another awakens. A multitude of tiny legs carries a millipede through the darkness. Beneath a jackfruit tree, a porcupine makes an evening meal of fallen fruit. On this moonlit night, the female king cobra searches for a place to lay her eggs. Their survival depends on her choice. Temperature and humidity must be just right if the eggs are to hatch. She sizes up a stand of bamboo. Her rustling startles the porcupine. Then, something remarkable happens. She begins to gather bamboo leaves with great sweeps of her body. She starts to build a nest. It is an extraordinary feat for a limbless animal to build a nest, and the female king cobra is the only snake that does so. It is an exhausting task. As she toils, a slender loris in the branches above begins his slow nocturnal search for food. He takes only passing notice of the stirrings below. The king cobra will continue to gather leaves for hours before she is ready to lay.
The loris is suddenly more attentive. The rustling below has stopped. It is well after midnight, and the cobra is laying her eggs. The eggs will slowly whiten as their coating dries. It will take the mother much of the night to lay her clutch of leathery eggs. Meanwhile, her upstairs neighbor has spotted a sleeping lizard. It's a lucky night for the loris. With 18 eggs laid, the mother cobra buries them beneath another layer of leaves. Here she will rest as the Indian sun warms the forest again. The cobra's maternal duties are far from over. For the next two months, she will guard her nest from predators like the Indian mongoose. This plucky little hunter will try his luck with anything that looks edible. In a scene from Kipling's Jungle Book, it is the cobra against the infamous mongoose. Mongoose is a notorious egg thief and one of the few creatures willing to challenge a king cobra head on. little mongoose angers the mother cobra. Towering three feet above him, she has no need to strike. She has made her message quite clear. Season. the king cobra's nest. The deluge may last for weeks.
Though the nest is battered, it's served its purpose. The female and her eggs have weathered the storm. After two months, the mother's long vigil is over. Instinct tells her to abandon the nest before her infants emerge, for she is a snake eater by nature. Within the nest, her eggs are stirring with life. Their mother glides off to hunt her first meal in months. Her babies will now have to fend for themselves. With a tiny sharp tooth, the first one tears open its shell. One by one, the others follow. Soon, the nest glistens with a dozen miniature king cobras, complete with venom and tiny fangs. For the first 24 hours, the hatchlings remain near their eggs as they absorb their nutritious yolks and take in the world for the first time. At last, they start to explore their nest. The pencil-thin babies are just 15 inches long, but already they act like their parents. Quick to respond to movement, they spar with each other. Then, instinctively, most... Beneath the other more cautious hatchlings, the mongoose returns to the abandoned nest. He's rummaging for leftovers. He devours a king cobra that never hatched. In just a week, one of the hatchlings sheds his skin for the first time. He will shed every month for his first year, since baby king cobras grow quickly. Now the hungry hatchling must search for his first kill. In 10 years, he may grow to 15 feet, but only with luck. For the forests of southern India are shrinking. In such a changing world, the hatchling's prospects are unsure. What will become of the little king? Will he be banished to the realm of legends, remembered only in a storybook? For today, at least, this mighty monarch rules the fragile forest, for he is king. <laughs>